when you look at the, at the investment in, in the world, it's about 1.4 billion. And when you look at Africa as a whole, it's only about $47 billion. And you ask yourself, what is happening to, to Africa? Why is, why, is, why, is it, why are we not attracting so much investment? And one of the issues that uh, we believe and having looked at all the figures is, one of the issues is how much are we, do we have the human capacity? And when we talk about human capacity, do we have the individuals in place to be able to put very good proposals, very good ways of selling the destinations as an investment hub? And the second thing is, what incentives do we have for these uh, so-called local and international players who are coming on board, and how can we support them during the process of investment in those, into different countries? And those are the things that I think are very critical, because once you have the correct human labor in terms of investment, meaning like having local expertise in different countries who can be able to package these products properly, be able to walk through a deal from the beginning to the end, is what is required in Africa. And you find a lot of that job, in the, the skill is not coming from Africa. So that skill, lack of that skill in Africa, doesn't, it has to be someone coming externally to see how can I invest in Africa other than the skill coming from Africa to invest in Africa. And I believe once we have that, we'll have consistency in terms of seeking investments. So you find most of the countries in Europe, in America, and other countries that have been able to grow this big portfolio of human capital on investment, then they're able to ensure there's consistent seeking for new investments into the region, consistently seeking for new ways to do business, finding solutions of different challenges that we have in Africa. And we need to find a solution for Africa. We are unique as Africa. And we have a lot of investment opportunities in Africa. I mean, you can look from the diamonds to everything that is there in Africa. How can we be able, as a tourism sector, yes. in the whole of the region, capitalize on this? Yes. And, and that are the government officials having this conversation? You know, the skill gap, having all the potential, but is, uh, are the policies there to actually create a sustainable environment for financing to bring in investments? What I can confidently say is, in Kenya, we have actually looked at all this. We have a college, Kenya Utali College. And Kenya Utali College has really grown up and been able and has been there and has a lot of wealth of experience in terms of growing this skill that is out there that is required in the country. And also the issue of being able to build capacities into DFIs like, uh, that are supposed to be geared towards tourism is very central to it. Once those DFIs have the right skill, at the same time, the output from the college, which is totally college, for example, in Kenya, brings that skill into the market, investors become confident that I know I am going to invest my money, I know there is human capital that is available, I know my investment is going to be safe, I know the adequate incentives being provided for me to be able to ensure that I have an ample environment to be able to do business. And I believe that is the main thing that is there. And uh, the conversation is there. And if it's not there in other regions, they know that that is one of the biggest gaps that is there. And we need to make regionally, also in East Africa, during this process of, um, of, of being able to discuss the solutions we need to get within East Africa is to have such conversations so that we can be able to have a region that is very strong economically and can be able to support most of part of Afri Africa. Yeah. Some countries in the region, for example, like Kenya, they have developed the tourism development funds. Mm -hmm. You know, is this something that uh, other countries on the continent should also take up? Is this something that is going to boost tourism in Kenya? Can it be used as a tool to actually promote tourism in these other countries on the continent? Yes, I think one of the issues that I, I'm actually really advocating for is to have either a regional or a African uh, uh, fund that is specifically supposed to assist African countries to be able to develop the tourism sector. Because with that, you're going to have a source of money that has a lot of government input into it, in the same way that we have the PTA as a, as, as, as a bank that was formed up, and, but specifically towards tourism. And that will actually bring a lot of confidence onto the international scene that these governments are serious about one of the biggest contributors to the economy, which is tourism. And one of, and you look at it, for example, in Africa, the youth that we have. In Africa, about 50, 60 percent of the population is youth. Yes. And tourism will be the best and easiest way to be able to have jobs from SMEs to the youth and to the women. 
because you can start that process of looking at a lady who is in her farm, farming, she has a local hotel, she supplies the goods, a youth who has skills and he wants to develop his skills from the hotel sector to any sector that he wishes to do it. And with the extent of tourism being able to work with mainly the industries and the manufacturing and the service level of it, we believe skills can be actually, with the easiest way to be able to get a lot of jobs for youth. Yeah, tourism is actually a huge sector and it is untapped here on the continent. But yet, sometimes when I hear tourism, maybe something uh, in a specific country and then I hear it's seasonal. For example, the movement of uh, the world of bees from uh, Kenya, to Tanzania and back. But then it's seasonal. So how can we diversify tourism sector? Yeah, one of the things that uh, we think is quite important is we have seen that uh, seasonality in tourism is important. Everything that, even that's why you have winter. There's a time that people need to go out, there's time they need to stay. But also as a product in a country, you must be able to diversify your product. Other than the wildlife, also have the beach well developed. Other than the beach, have innovative products. And also capitalize on the innovation that is already there. And actually look, for example, do we have a theme park that is also going to be reduce the pressure on the wildlife and be able to conserve the environment more. So diversification of products is very important. And I think also that is one element. In Africa, we have continued to sell consistently the same product that we'll find that, but this product, whilst it is consistent, has actually been one of the biggest products. But we also we need to yeah, go to I'm other niche that. products that are there for tourism, especially attractions that we can bring people to see during seasons that maybe, for example, the world-based system.